Hey guys, I'm back with another video. So this guy was asking me over here, he was asking me if I know where the mental position correction curve is at. So this was a pretty simple one uh, to figure out and I hadn't really explored the mental system uh, too much. Uh, now all this stuff is calculated, but I can uh, break it down for you and explain that to you. So just to jump to that section of it, uh, if you go under mental system and go to get mental asset, that's actually where all this stuff is uh, stored and calculated at. So before we go on to break down the entire system uh, here, and I'm not going to do a real detailed uh, explanation of it this time because I'm, I'm a little pressed for time right now, but I may come back to this and do a more detailed one later. So uh, when it, the get mental asset is called, if it's uh, if the mental type is high mental, it'll uh, choose this uh, curve with this starting position, this low height, play rate, all of this. So same with this one for the low mental and then the falling catch. Now you can adjust uh, these height values and stuff in here, but the curves are stored under data curves and mental curves and here's your one millimeter or one meter and your two meter so you'll see that that these curve values are 0 and 0.1 and 0.3 respective and they go up to 0 0.4 0 0.6 and 0 0.7 so they go up and over a little bit uh, this one a about the same, but it's the the up values are closer to these. So again, like I said, I'm not going to do a real detailed uh, breakdown of this, but I'm going to go through here and explain to you a little bit about this. So if you needed to adjust uh, those curve values, uh, those are right here, and these this is the starting offset, which determines uh, well the offset from the start. And these will basically be the same. Now the values that do change is the low height rate and uh, the high height. And that's pretty much it. Uh, the play rate uh, on this one changes because you're in the air. This one also uses the 2 meter uh, that the low mental uses. So if we come over here to our player input graph, you'll see when we jump, uh, it, if we're not in the low mental, if we're not performing a low mental, a high mental, a rolling action, or a getting up action, and again, if we're not mentaling or ragdolling, then we'll move over here. And if we are either grounded or in the air, We'll do a mental check. So if we're in the air, it'll do a mental check. It'll end up firing uh, this one right here for the falling catch. And if uh, we're grounded and we have movement input, then we will do another check. And you'll see that we use trace settings that are different for the grounded than we do if we're falling. So if we're falling, we have a lower high ledge height than we do if we're uh, grounded. Same for reach distance. The reach distance is slightly lower. And that's the only difference I see. So if you'll see... If we are crouched and there's no ledge nearby, he'll get up. Or he'll uncrouch right here. So if this returns false and he's crouched, then he'll uncrouch. If that returns false and he's standing, jump. Now, if 
he has movement input, then he'll do the mental check. But if he doesn't have the, the movement input, then he'll just uncrouch or jump. But if I push forward, you'll see he climbs. And if he's crouched and I, I'm going forward and I jump, he'll climb. So with that being explained, we do the mental check. Now in the mental check, they're doing a lot of uh, stuff right here. And like I said, I'm not going to do a detailed explanation. So I'm not going to break down all this stuff, all these minute calculations. But we'll see the, the capsule base location is just uh, the world location. Uh, well, let's start down here. It's the scaled half height plus a Z offset multiplied by the up vector. And again, if you're unfamiliar with this, an up vector is just a, a, a vector between, with a value between 0 and 1 that's pointing, that's pointing upwards. And those kind of vectors, it allows us to scale up, uh, to proportionally scale up other vectors so that they're pointing up as well at, at this height. And then we're subtracting that from the world location. Now, if we, oh, also over here on, yeah, and that's the capsule base location. But before we do that, actually, we should cover this as well. Over here on our tick event, every frame, we're getting the essential values, and then we're checking our movement state. If we're in the air, it updates the in-air rotation, and then it checks, do we have movement input, or in other words, is the character, is the player pushing forward, you know, left, right, back, whatever, uh, or if they're pushing forward, yeah, uh, then we will do a mental check and we will use the following trace settings. And again, back here, you uh, get the movement input, the get player movement input, and that's just the forwards, uh, backwards, and they use this also for movement. Again, I'm not going to explain that because this isn't a detailed one and it would take too long. This is a, this would be one of those ones like I did recently where I did about four or five hours worth of video footage just explaining everything little by little. But uh, anyway, it checks if it's a walkable surface, if what it hit was is a walkable surface. Uh, well, it checks if it's not a walkable surface, and it's blocking uh, the hit, and it's not overlapping. If all of that is true, then we'll do the impact point and the trace normal. Otherwise, we'll uh, return it with can't climb. So, and this is just basically returning... Uh, the wall or object the character cannot walk on as it says there and then we're tracing downwards using the impact point the base the capsule base location and then the trace settings that were passed in and he's just hiding uh, these pins right here by selecting this and showing them you can see all those pins now And then he's using that to do another sphere trace by channel. He's seeing if this one is walkable and it's blocking the hit. Then we'll do a down trace. Then we'll store the down trace location, which uh, uses the Z of the impact point, but the location of X and Y of the hit. And then our hit component right here. That's the component we hit. We're checking if the capsule has room to stand at the downwards trace location. If so, set that location as the target transform and calculate the mental height. So we got the down trace location. Reason is a set Z offset of two. Again, the uh, get capsule location from base. We're getting the scaled half height and we're adding to it that Z offset. And then we're using that as the Z of the base location. 
So it adds 0 to x, 0 to y, and it adds this to the z. So we're just bringing that up by this down trace location with that z offset. So we're getting the rotation uh, or the inverted vector of the initial trace normal which will point in the opposite direction turning it into a rotator and we're making uh, a transform out of that which becomes the target transform this right here capsule has room check it's just making sure the capsule has room to be on that surface we're breaking this transform from the target transform and we're subtracting from it the actor location to get the mantle height. That will give us uh, the uh, mantle height location based off of uh, by taking the actor's location away from this target transform which was from our down trace location in our initial trace normal which was inverted. Determine the mental type. So right here, you see that none grounded. If if they're anything but in the air, and the mental height is greater than 125, then we will do a high men, a high mental, or otherwise we will do a low mental. If they're in the air, we're going to set it to falling catch. Then we're going to start our mental by passing in the mantle height value or target transform hit component and mantle type right here and also we're uh, returning this with uh, can climb because if you remember over where is it over here if we can't climb then we're gonna jump or we're just gonna jump or we're gonna uncrouch so you only want to you want to make sure you don't forget that so if you're on the mental start you're getting the mental type of type mental it's a enum mental type so we have our mental params right here that's a, a structure and mental type is an enum. So as you can see, it's just storing names. These are storing uh, animation, montage, curve values, floats, so on and so forth. I just want to make sure you understood that. And right here, it's just passing that in to here. And again, that's is what, what I was covering earlier. This is where the position uh, correction curves are stored. The starting offset, the low height, the play rate, the start position, high height, play, high play rate. And then coming back over here to our mental start, you can see that it's using, it's passing in the mental type, which was passed in right here at the start, which comes from our trace check. So it's going to be one of these. And then it's setting that as the, uh, it's uh, choosing one of these based on that mental type. And it's using that as our structure. Uh, it's setting up our structure for our mental asset. And then from the mental asset, we're setting our mental parameters. Again, that's a structure right here. It stores our animontage. Again, I've, uh, I covered that earlier. So they're passing in the montage, the position correction curve, and the starting offset. And again, they didn't need to use two of these, but they used two of these to make it look cleaner. And again, they could have uh, had all of these coming from one, but they wanted to make it look cleaner. So the mental height is, a, is our value. And again, the mental height was passed in by the trace. And then we're mapping uh, that to a range with uh, our estimated low height value and our estimated high height value. And we're mapping that to the range of the low play rate 
to the high play rate. And then we're uh, and then that becomes our play rate. And we're doing the same thing for the starting position, but we're mapping it from the low height to the high height to a range between the low start position and the high start position. And then that becomes our uh, mental params. If you all want me to do a more detailed explanation of this, uh, uh, just let me know. But I just wanted to kind of get this one out there and do a short video on it so that people uh, have a uh, rough understanding of what's going on here. Uh, right here on step two, we have uh, the convert the world space target to the mental components, local space. And this one's pretty simple. So we're getting that mental edge, WS, which it gets passed in. It, it gets chosen by the over here uh, by the mental uh, by the trace channel so that one thing so if you look here that mental edge uh, world space that's actually an ALS component uh, and transforms that's uh, the type of it is so you can right click and split this and you'll get that so if you'll see, that's what they did right here. And then they plugged in the target transform that was calculated up here and the hit component. But this is in world space. So if we come back over here, that's why they set the mental ledge for local space using this. And all they're doing is they're passing the component straight in over here. And then they're also getting the component, and we're getting the world lo the world transform. We're invert inverting it and multiplying that by the world space transform, and it and it gives us local space. So that was, that's a pretty uh, uh, neat trick that they did there. There is actually uh, a built-in uh, component for that for doing that. Um, so I don't know, maybe, maybe they did it that way because, I don't know, maybe it's more performance friendly. I don't know. Uh, or maybe I didn't understand that other component that's built into Unreal all that well. But anyway, over here, they're getting the mental edge world space transform and they're setting that as the mental target. And then they're subtracting that mental target from the actor transform to give us the mental actual start offset. I don't want to go into all this stuff. It's a lot of calculations, but I wanted to try to cover everything so you all were at least a little familiar with it. So over here on step four, they're calculating the anim animated start offset from the target location. Uh, this would be the location of the actual animation start at at relative to the target transform. So they're, they're getting the mental lo target location and rotation and they're just doing a little bit of uh, math here. So they're getting the mental parameters uh, that were stored up, that were set up here. Remember we uh, calculated the starting position, play rate, and starting offset or just the play rate and the starting offset up here. And then down here, they're getting that start offsets Y, and they're multiplying it by this rotation transformed into a vector. And then they're play, you, they're using the X and the Y of that, but they're just they're not changing the Z. And then they're subtracting that from the location to use as a location. And then the mental target rotation is just the rotation. And then our mental target from up here. It's a transform, as you can see, location, rotation, and scale. And they're just subtracting these from these. So if you look in here, they're subtracting location A from location B, rotation X from rotation X of uh, A and between A and B. And they're doing that all across the board, even for the scale. That becomes our mental animated start offset. Right here, they're clearing the move, the character movement mode, and set the movement st state to mentaling. 
That way, you know, you don't have any issues with other stuff trying to play or, or things not working right because everything's based on this uh, state uh, mode, movement modes and movement states. I've explained those in previous uh, videos. So over here on step six, configure the mental timeline so that it is the same length as the lerp. Correction curve minus the starting position and plays at the same speed as the animation. Then start the timeline. So they're just making sure that uh, these are basically synced. So they're getting uh, the time range of the position slash correction curve and they're subtracting from it the starting position uh, in the animation. So the position at which they start the animation. That becomes the new timeline length right here. So that mantle timeline, this is a timeline that they created and they're setting the timeline length to this and then they're setting the play rate of that timeline to this and then they're playing that timeline. So if you right click here and you find references you'll you'll see these timelines here. And this is a mental update. You'll see that they get the timeline and they get the play back position and they add it to the starting position right here on the mental update. But let's go into that here in a minute. So So after they've set up the timeline, they're going to play the Anna montage if it's valid. And that's where it gets played right here using that play rate. They're uh, just right clicking on this and they're converting it. Uh, in this case, I would convert it back to pure cast and then I can convert it to validated git. So they're converting it to validated git there. So they can make sure it's actually that there's actually something stored here before they try to play it. So then we move on to the update. So this is being uh, called on uh, the uh, event graph right here. Oh, they have the mental timeline. Now you you might be wondering uh, how this works, but in actuality, uh, they're playing that again. If I can go back, they're playing it right here. So they're telling it to play from start. So they don't actually need to have it connected to anything. That's why you'll see that they have the update, and then after it's finished, after the timeline is over, they they end it. So here on the update, they uh, continually update the uh, mental target from the stored uh, local transform to follow along with moving objects. So they have the mental uh, ledge uh, local space structure here and they're passing it in here to convert it to local space. Again, it's the same thing that we've seen earlier. They're setting that as the mantle target. Now over here on step two, they're updating the position and correction alphas using the position correction curve set for each mental. So the uh, uh, the mental param structure right here, he's uh, breaking that and oh man. All right, so I'm back. Uh, sorry about that. So let's uh, finish up where where we left off. So. Over here on the mental uh, params, we're getting the starting position. If you remember, if you go back to the mental start, you'll see that we set the mental params right here. And the starting position is based off the mental height, and it's being mapped to a range between the low height and the high height, uh, to a range between the low start position and the high start position. And then uh, we're adding that to the playback position of the mental timeline. And then uh, we're using that as the end time for the vector of the curve. 
and then we're storing the x as the position alpha, the y as the x y correction alpha, and the z as or as the z correction alpha. So down here uh, on step three, you'll see that uh, it says LORP multiple transforms together for independent control over the horizontal and ver vertical blend to the animated start position as well as the target position. So we're getting the mental animated start offset location X, Y, and Z. Well, we're not using the Z. We're just using the X and the Y. We're using the mental actual start offset location Z as the Z. And then we're just plugging the start offset rotation directly into the rotation. And this is for the uh, mental animated start offset location and the uh, mental actual start offset uh, location. So we're making a transform out of that. And these get set, let's see. Yeah, so here's our mental actual start offset and our mental animated start offset. Right here, we calculated it over here in mental start on step three and step four. And so we're linearly interpolating between the mental actual start offset and a modified version that uses the X and the Y of the mental animated start offset, which is the same as this one, but it's higher. So it's, uh, or it's, it'll be higher or lower because we're using the mental actual start offset location Z. So we're blending between uh, that using the alpha of the correction curve. We're breaking uh, that new transform and we're making a, a, another transform using the X and the Y and the rotation and then we're blending into the animated vertical offset using the Z value of the position correction curve. So as right here we use the XY correction offset down here we're using the Z correction alpha to blend between the two and it's the same thing you see same exact thing except for this one we're using the Z correction alpha and for this one we're using the XY uh, the the X Y and then this is the Z and that that's what we use for the Z the one that was blended with the Z it's used for the Z and the ones getting used that are getting blended for the XY correction alpha are the XY and rotation then we're getting the mental target and we're adding these two transforms together and then we're linearly interpolating it between the mental target and the mental target plus this using the position alpha right here and if you look at this they're just adding these together just like the other one was subtracting them this is uh, just vector math so it says here it says blend from the currently blending transforms into the final mental target using the X value of the position slash correction curve and that's the X value that they, that they speak of right here most of this you're not really going to need to mess with if you're just trying to uh, modify the mental targets but it might be nice to know exactly how they're doing all this so that you understand it better because you will be changing some of these values and it'll impact the way that these things are calculated so the initial blend in controlled by the timeline curve to allow the actor to blend into the position slash correction curve at the midpoint this prevents pop when mentaling an object uh, lower than the animated mantle. So again, uh, 
we're getting the mental target and we're adding it to the mental actual start offset and then we're linearly interpolating between this and this but this time we're using the blend in which was brought in over here when this was called so if you remember uh, this gets called right here on the event graph whenever the uh, every time the mental timeline is updated it'll call this and it'll give it a new blend value that's based on the position along this timeline. That becomes our LARPed target. And then, right here, we set the actor's location and rotation to the LARPed target. And that's all we're doing here. We're just updating the target. And it's getting the target that was passed in. It's storing it as the target rotation. And then, uh, it, it's setting the actor's location and rotation to that new rotation and that new uh, location. They're just passing these in in case you want to set those there. But if you see this target rotation that gets stored, it gets uh, set in a few places and it, and it gets uh, used in a few places. So on smooth character rotation that allows uh, the character to smoothly rotate add to character rotation uh, that's actually I don't think used this right here so if we see this one this is a function that I don't think is actually used anywhere uh, I was looking for somewhere that this was used I think it was put in here uh, for us to use if we needed it but they're not actually using it. Anyway, moving on. So the last thing to cover here is the mental end. And that's just setting the movement back to walking. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. It's uh, a lot of math going on there. It works with curves. Uh, these curve values here, I haven't actually played with them, but you have zero for the Z. Yeah, for the well, they start start off. Let's see. Yeah. Start off at zero. Then you have this one. There's those two. And there's that one. So you'll see the uh, Z gets started at zero. And then it goes to point three. And then it comes up to, or it goes over to the right to point seven. They have 2.1 set here as well. But yeah, if you were needing to know where those were, that's where they are. I'm, I'll have to do another video. I'll have to break this uh, stuff down a little further for you guys. But I hope that helps you understand at least how the mentoring system is integrated and set up. And um, yeah, I'm going to have to do a follow-up video on this, obviously to break down exactly uh, how these curves work. So stay tuned for that, but I do have work to do today, so I gotta get to it. So I hope y'all found this helpful. I know I kind of uh, threw this together and I wasn't extremely detailed on it like I normally am. So I hope uh, that didn't uh, pose an issue for you. If you found this helpful, leave a like down below uh, and uh, consider subscribing.